During an activity, it can be really useful for the teacher to pause and ask students to share out their ideas. This can give them both a sense of ownership over the learning that they've done and also give them opportunities to practice scientific argumentation. It's really important to build in some flex time within your activity because if you have your activity um, planned down so that you don't allow for any of that discussion time, um, you most likely will feel really rushed because your students will generate so many really rich and interesting ideas and um, you'll want to have that time built into your lesson. Projecting the simulation using either a computer and projector or a smart board can provide a common focal point during discussions. It's helpful to have the students turn their attention away from their individual computers for a moment and look up the smart board so that we can use that image and you know what we're seeing on the smart board as a whole class discussion. And then we can look at it and say, well, what was happening here? Can anybody describe what's happening here? But it's also because as I see students doing really great things on their own computers, I can ask students to go to my computer, which is hooked up to the smart board, and recreate what they've done so that we can use that as a whole class discussion. Some teachers plan times for a share out discussion at specific okay, points in an activity. Tilt your computer so they're not completely closed, mm -hmm. and your eyes should be on me in five, four. Those times are really great at calling on students to explain their findings rather than a teacher explaining what those things are. So who would like to share out on question number two? What are some of the things that were the same when we compare the motion of the sun and the earth and the earth and the moon? You may also want to have some discussion on the fly. We can pretty much just say, everybody turn and look at Joe's computer. And Joe and Jill are going to show you um, something they found. So I have to like shout out because it's a big room. All right, here we go. This is what so-and-so is seeing. And usually when I say that, someone else will go, oh, but you can do this, 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 and this. So bringing a problem to the whole group gives the whole group an opportunity to solve the problem. My personal experience with high school students is they don't really want to share out to the whole large group very often. I try to find ways for them to share um, in different ways, either share, pair, or just talk to your partner. Lots of times in the simulation activity, I won't have them write anything. I'll just say, talk to your neighbor about this idea or that idea. Well, actually, what's the, uh, the voltage of the light bulb? Will it be divided by three, or is it squared? It's 25? No, it's 8 point. So it's, let's see what it is. 25. Regardless of when you hold a whole class discussion, certain prompts can be useful jumping off points to get the discussion started. Okay, what did you guys observe? Can you explain to the rest of the class how you did that or what makes sense or why that makes sense? And then call on another student. Do you agree with that? That really draws out student ideas and I've found that other students want to comment on theirs and add to, well, I also discovered this. Does that mean the same thing? It's not a teacher discussion of stopping the activity to tell the students something. It's the students driving what that discussion really is. What did you guess? Why? What were you thinking? Okay, he thought um, A, because it got less acidic. That was his idea. Okay, Jake? Okay. So he said he used this information about the pH is 7 and the pH is 5, so you mix them. It's going to go to somewhere between. You thought what was neutral? Oh, you thought adding water, since water's neutral, it might not change it. So let's see in the simulation, because uh, we have some good reasons there. Uh, you guys watch the meter. I'm going to add water. It won't what? Okay, so Chase said it won't pass seven. Does that make sense or not? Because the FETs are extremely sophisticated, there's a lot going on in them, and some of the higher level kids will, oh, and I saw this, and I saw that, and so they'll bring in other things that they observed, which really creates some rich discussion. It's a lot of fun. It might become unstable, but it didn't change the name. You are exactly right. Very nice, Alberto. Very nice. If you want to share your, your thinking with the rest of your table, you may. For example, if we're looking at the gravity of an orbit sim, 
our objective might be we're trying to decrease the gravity force and um, the sim might be paused so we don't know what's going to happen yet and so I might ask a student to come up and try what they think is going to de decrease the gravity force and then I might put it out to the class, okay, what do you think is going to happen when we press play? Is that really going to decrease the gravity force? Is it going to increase the gravity force? Is it going to stay the same? We'll have a share out and then we'll press play and then we'll get that feedback from the simulation to see if we were correct or not. Can I please have one volunteer come up to the board and show me how you made the moon go around the earth in a bigger circle? So the moon going around the earth and the biggest circle possible, but I still want to be able to see the circle. John David, could you do that for me, please? Okay, what did John David just do, Liliana? He moved the moon farther away from the earth. Raise your hand if, any, if anybody else tried to move the moon farther away from the earth to increase that orbit path.